So um, during the long summer of migration, and a different year than we have, the one we have today, it was the summer of 2015, um, the borders were still open in comparison to today's picture. There was no barbed wire between countries, and refugees and migrants um, were self-organizing and moving in thousands, border after border. Um, in all the diversity, uh, there were people um, joining across nations and marching towards freedom or towards hope. In most of the, um, of, of the articles you will find from solidarity movements, these marches of refugees are called marches of hope. Um, let's start uh, now with a um, just to set this straight, we're talking about two different movements, the movement of migrants and refugees, so-called newcomers, and the solidarity movements. There was a time where these two merged, but it was not like this, and it, you know, it should not be considered uh, as the same thing. On the one hand, again, uh, the newcomers organizing around the hope of, hope of a life and dignity in Europe, and on the other hand, their determination, the fact that they were putting their bodies first, were not hesitating um, and not, uh, not afraid of crossing borders, whatever that would mean, inspired people around the region, Balkan route, Greece, but also Northern Europe, to stand with them. So um, a question that I would like to leave in the space, just hanging, uh, would be what was what was really inspiring? Was it the fact that migrants and refugees were putting their bodies in the front? Was it uh, the idea of uh, uh, a European society that would be able to provide for these people and work to welcome these people? Um, so we have these two fundamentally uh, different but fundamentally solidarity movements um, developing around Europe and especially along the route, um, the migration route from Greece up into the Balkan uh, Peninsula and until the very edges of Europe. Uh, this merge that happened between these two movements um, happened in Praxis. Um, border after border, uh, the receiving communities were not prepared for the masses. They were not prepared for having uh, thousands of people overnight camping uh, just around the village or around the corner. So um, people had to come together. They were forced by the situation to overcome all kinds of borders, not only physical and national borders, but also linguistic borders and, uh, uh, let's say, political borders in many cases. Um, in all this, this time, um, just to set it uh, plainly with the date, we're talking about last summer until November uh, 2015. In, uh, during all this time, um, you didn't, it was not only newcomers moving from border to border, you had activists, uh, volunteers, goods, NGOs, reporters, everybody. It was like practically a time where in, in the region, national borders didn't exist. Um, so, until there was a, let's say, a justified euphoria um, that, that you could also feel within the societies of the welcoming countries, like uh, how we experienced it in Austria when the first trains started coming from Kiletti, from Budapest. Um, you had on the one hand, thousands of newcomers coming in and thousands of people in Vienna welcoming them with cheers or Arabic words they copied or Google translated that were somehow wrong, but the euphoria was the same, you know? Uh, and all this um, euphoria ended up being, let's say, plasmatic. Um, it all stopped. Um, officially in March, but if you look at it deeply, it was actually last November. Last November was a time where there was a decision by the Macedonian government, enhanced by the Austrian government at the moment, um, to close the Balkan route for all other nationalities except Syrians, Iraqis, and Afghans. And it was, you could say, I mean, I'm not a lawyer, but 
This is how I read it. One could say that the right to migrate and the right to refuge was practically denied to everyone after November that was crossing that route. It, there was a racial segregation. There were people from three nationalities who were allowed to cross the border. Um, looking at the movements in the region, this, uh, at the beginning, the effects of this decision were not obvious, especially in Greece, where um, uh, estimated about 850,000 people marched to Greece and finally arrived to Germany and other countries. Why? Because the non sia Sia we call Syrian Iraqi Sudan, is a non sia people only made up about 4 to 10 percent of the population moving at the moment. So, um, there was not an immediate reaction um, to this decision from the side of the civic movements. The, there was not an immediate reaction to the fact that the Geneva Convention was practically ignored in the Balkan route. And we had to pay for that. Uh, we had to pay for that um, a heavy price. And three months later, the Balkan route closed completely. That was then in March. After March, nobody else was allowed to cross. Uh, the militarization of the borders. Uh, in Europe um, happened uh, in the face of an avalanche. Uh, it was uh, border after border, fence after fence. Things were coming, were becoming um, more difficult. And right now we are in a situation where there are border controls all over the route, but also within European countries uh, like Austria and Italy, or Austria and Hungary. So, um, in this, um, let's say, in this uh, situation, um, if we have to, if, if we want to analyze the situation, there are three, four different factors we have to look at. Uh, first of all, uh, and the most important, uh, on my view, was the response of the civic society, um, the NGOs, and the political activists. Uh, three phenomenically different actors uh, that actually joined, joined forces, and they were able to act to help these people. Um, now, how did this work? Um, my hypothesis is that it worked as long as the emergency was there, as long as the, open, the, the borders were open, as long as these people were moving, I mean, newcomers now were moving into thousands, were holding together, had their own movement. This cooperation between NGO, civic society and activists seemed to work just fine. Uh, from the moment, um, the border closed, the necessity was, so to say, gone, and then the controversies between um, these three civic, act the three civic actors um, actually changed and um, came to the surface. Um, one minute. That's nice. Okay. So, um, uh, uh, something that we have to keep in mind also within uh, the framework of our, of our conference this day, we're discussing already about municipalities and how overcoming uh, the national state as a, as a key factor for migration uh, and inclusion. Uh, I, I prefer inclusion to integration. Um, what we have to take into account is that in order for um, networks like this, networks, okay, that's it. I will forget my paper for the name. Okay. Uh, so all these networks that emerged were generic. There was no bureaucracy behind them. There was no chief of the staff. It was people that wanted to be good people and people that were fighting for their life and they found the moment to be together. And the priority that was given from everyone was we have to save these people, we have to make the life of these people better, we have to somehow behave human. So if uh, we want to discuss the, the, I don't think that there is going to be a master plan on how to tackle the situation, but what we have to do um, on the side of the movements is, is always keep the channels of communication open. Also, sometimes uh, to people who don't necessarily agree. So that would be it for the first time.